Hello, welcome to this short session today. Listen, we're gonna talk about types of contracts. This is in your common law or the national portion of your studies in preparation for your state exam. Listen, my name is John Enzing. I'm a certified real estate instructor, both in Louisiana and Florida. And my specialty is to tutor and prep students like yourself for the exam. If you need help cleaning up some things you don't understand, could be finance contracts, could be real estate math, it could be civil code, state portion. Go to privatetutoringsessions.com, privatetutoringsession.com and book an appointment. Or you can email me at john.enzing at gmail.com. This is for non-credited hours. Okay, let's look at types of contracts. When we talk about types of contracts, we're not really talking about different um types of contracts like real estate contracts and automobile contracts what we're talking about in contract law are the different types of contracts that are all associated in this case with real estate so the first one we're going to look at is expressed contracts versus implied contracts okay and you have to know this for the state exam very important to know the difference between the two so the express contract is either in writing or verbally. Remember, you're expressing yourself. So you see they're gonna be submitted according to the statutes of fraud. Many contracts must be in writing to be enforceable. So in writing, can you have verbal agreements? Absolutely, you can have verbal agreements. Hard to prove in court, but you can have verbal agreements. So expressing or express contract means you're either gonna put it in writing or you're going to give it verbally, okay? Now, implied contract is the intent or obligation you're making is through action only you are not pay attention to this you are not expressing yourself in writing or verbally but only through action okay let me give you a couple of examples in general when you go out to eat supper or some places they call it dinner so when you go out in the evening and have dinner and you sit down, you never call the general manager over. You never tell the wait staff or either the general manager or wait staff to bring you a contract so you can express yourself. Or do you give them a verbal commitment that you're going to pay for the meal? No. You order your meal. After the meal is over, they bring you a bill. Okay. They bring you the check to pay for it. Well, what's your obligation? Well, the action of consuming the meal is your obligation to pay for it. That's called implied through action. Well, John, how does that apply to real estate? Well, let's say you're in an open house and you've got a listing and I'm a potential buyer and I walk into this open house and we start to talk and discuss about the house and the area. And so you lay out you know, uh, the, the house plan and you show me the house and you tell me about all the area and I like it. Well, there may be an assumption, that's a good word to assume, there may be an assumption that, well, you're gonna work for me, and then you may, as the agent, assume that I'm gonna be your client. So again, through action of you giving me information, me receiving it, and, and, and giving you the idea that I'm gonna be your client, through implied contract, you have formed an agency. And many times this is uh, not legal when it comes to uh, disclosures, uh, and, and we'll get more into that when we get into the civil code. But implied agency is uh, can sometimes uh, cause some troubles, legal legal issues, especially when you're dealing with dual agency. Okay, so know the difference between expressed and implied. Remember, expressed in writing or verbally, implied is through action. Now, the other two you're going to know for the state exam is bilateral versus unilateral. And you're going to want to know an example for each. And, and, and the typical example they use, I'm going to let you know. Now, bilateral, that's both parties in the agreement that obligate each other to something or to perform something. In other words, a purchase agreement is an example of that. So with the purchase agreement, the buyer is obligating to fund or bring financing to purchase the home. The seller is, is uh, promising or obligating to bring a clear and marketable title and transfer the home to the buyer. So they both have obligations. It's bilateral or two, both obligations, okay? 
versus unilateral. Unilateral, only one party is obligated to perform in the exchange for something. The example for this would be an option agreement, okay, or an option contract. You've got an option E and an option OR. The option OR is the seller. The option E is going to be the buyer. Okay. So, what is an option contract? Well, the option E puts it under contract and has an exercise date maybe of one year. And in that one year period, basically what happens is the option E just rents the place with the option to buy it at the end of that year. Okay. The option OR is obligated to sell the property, the option E is not obligated to buy it, okay? Remember, they can make that determination at the exercise date, whether they wanna purchase it or just give the keys back to the homeowner. So this is unilateral or one way. In this case, the seller or the option or is obligated to sell the property, but the option E or the buyer doesn't have to purchase the property. So we're talking about express versus implied, bilateral versus unilateral. Now, there's another couple of terms here, formal and informal contracts. A formal contract is nothing more than a contract that's written, okay? Many states, and, and Louisiana being one of them, according to the statutes of fraud, certain obligations in real estate, certain contracts in real estate must be in writing to be enforceable in a court of law. There doesn't need to be a seal on the contract to make it a valid contract. Remember, any other section of a valid contract, you've got essential elements that make that valid and enforceable. Having a seal on the contract is not a requirement. An informal contract is typically verbal or oral, okay? So if you see any type of test question that deals with an informal contract, we're talking about a verbal or oral agreement, okay? Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this short session on types of contract. Again, if you need some one-on-one -on -one training, go to privatetutoringsession.com. That's privatetutoringsession.com. Book you some time. Hey, look, good luck on your exam. Bye for now.